Hi guys, it's Nick, and today I'm going to be taking you through 10 rare plants that I believe are worth the hype. Now, are they worth the price? I don't know, that's for you to decide. But if you have the burning desire in order to own rare plants, I think that these are the ones that stand out to me as the best. And if you have burning anywhere else, I would call a doctor. So this list is based off of two factors. The first one is how unique the features of these plants are meaning you can't really find any other plants that are comparable with these features for a lesser price. So you either pay the price or forego buying something that has these features. And two, how well they have grown for me, meaning how vigorous, how fast, how full, how healthy they look. I live in the Northeast, meaning if anyone else is in my same situation, these plants should thrive for them as well. It is extremely cloudy here in the winter, so I do give some of them supplemental lighting, but that is it. I don't give them any extra humidity. I do not turn the heat up. I really don't do anything very special for them. And they still grow and they do well for me. So let's go on to the first plant. So our first one is Hoya Sunrise. This is probably the most well-known sun stressable Hoya. Now this is a hybrid and not a species. It is a cross between Hoya Obscura and Hoya Lacunosa. It gets its color from Hoya Obscura. So I own a lot of Hoyas and for Hoyas, I feel like it grows moderately quick. I do have a few other Hoyas like Hoya Australis, Hoya Lisa, Hoya Imperialis that do grow rather quickly but I wouldn't say that this is the slowest growing Hoya either. It is also quite compact, meaning you can have a plant that has a lot of leaves and a lot of stems and is full and nice and bushy. Just look at this beautiful tiny bush. Without having a huge gigantic plant if you are worried about the space that a Hoya takes up. So I have not bloomed this yet, but I hear if you get it to flower, it's got nice small umbels of kind of like pinky white flowers that smell like perfume. <laughs> So, how much does this bad boy Shut go up. for? Well, I checked on Mercari, and just FYI, most of these prices are going to be from Mercari. The reason for this is because it is the only platform where I can hit the sold button right under the search bar, and it tells me what the price is all the plants were sold for. So I have real prices and not inflated prices that sellers, you know, mark up and then gradually mark down and sell the plant for. So I feel like that's the most honest way to determine the prices. Of course, nurseries sell these plants for less, but they're perpetually out of stock, so that doesn't really help anyone. Anyways, the most recent one I see was sold for $51, and it's a small plant. It has about five leaves, so that's kind of what it's priced. There's also a really sad looking one that sold for $35. I would not have bought one that looks like this, but I don't know. It looks like it's held over a pool or something. So maybe they like dropped it in the pool and it got stuck in the filter and they pulled it out and they're just like, you know, you know, I'm gonna put this on Mercari. Someone will buy it. And that they did. Of course, I have to give you a close up of this or it would be a crime against humanity. There are other Hoyas out there like Hoya Obscura that will sun stress red. However, they're more uncommon and more rare and cost more money. So I think this is your best option if you want a really nice Hoya that sun stresses well. I have a video about sun stressing this that I will link below. You can see how it looked before I sun stressed it. Also, do you like all my flowers right here? Um, we were supposed to get a frost two nights ago and uh, I guess whoever did the meteorology was wrong because there definitely was not a frost and I picked all the flowers. My garden just looks like it was ransacked by a gang of rabbits. The next one is Syngonium Podophyllum Albo. Now, like regular Syngonium Podophyllum, this is a really easy grower. It grows pretty fast as well. I started this in the summer and it was just kind of like a leafless vine and it sent out so far these six leaves for me and there is a seventh on the way. I think what's great about this is it's not as expensive as other variegated aeroids, and the type of variegation it has is similar to other more expensive variegated plants like Monstera Albo. So you kind of still get the experience for a little bit of a lesser price. I've actually had other cuttings of this produce half moon and variegated leaves. Those are not stable by the way. If a plant produces one half moon leaf, it doesn't mean the next leaf will be half moon 
or if it produces one fully variegated leaf, the next one will be fully variegated. Sometimes a plant will produce fully variegated leaves and then continue producing fully variegated leaves, but that will eventually kill the plant if you don't cut it out because it cannot produce chlorophyll. But this does kind of have one half moony leaf a little bit, so I'll show you what I mean. Here's the half moony, moonish, whatever, moon moon leaf. Um, it's not like half green, half white, but it is half green with speckles and half white almost. It seems to be getting more variegated, so I might have to chop it off at some point if it just gets fully variegated. So I still think this is a great choice compared to other variegated aeroids that are more expensive and slower growing. I have actually seen reports of this being sold at Lowe's in large six inch pots, so it might be becoming more common, which makes sense because it's an easy, fast grower. If you want to grow one of these, but you don't want to pay the prices that they're currently going for, I would say wait a little bit. So on Mercari, this goes for about $30 a node. Again, if you get a node, it'll grow into a full plant fairly quickly. So I think it's worth it, especially if you're contemplating other variegated aeroids. So our next one is the Velvet Leaf Anthurium. This is actually Anthurium crystallinum crossed with Anthurium forgetii. I think this kind of applies to other Velvet Leaf Anthuriums. However, hybrids tend to be easier and faster growing. I've seen Anthurium clarinervium around, so I think that's another popular one. Something about Anthurium forgetii that did not manifest through this hybrid, unfortunately, is that it has peltate leaves. Now, I don't have an Anthurium forgetii at my whim, unfortunately, but I do have a couple examples to show you. The nasturtium is a great example. Peltate just means that the petiole attaches kind of in the center of the leaf, instead of at the margin. The watermelon peperomia is also a good example, but as you can see, this attaches at the margin or the edge of the leaf. What's super interesting about these types of anthuriums, I feel like, is this kind of webbed venation right here. And I feel like this is different from other aeroids where the venation goes from the center of the leaf out to the edge, and it doesn't really create any other type of pattern like the anthuriums. The venation is also very sparkly and striking in the sunlight. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it's not something I feel like can be appreciated unless you're in person. I will still, however, attempt to show you right now. I would definitely recommend seeing one of these in person if you can. As far as growth for this, I actually got it with two leaves on it. It came shipped within the United States. The leaves were much smaller than this and they came damaged. However, um, the leaves kind of stayed on until it sent out this leaf. And I think all the energy kind of got sucked out of those leaves and put into this leaf, which I think is really cool just because I don't want a plant with damaged leaves. Um, I know when I have a plant with damaged leaves, I'm very conflicted to try and take them off, but then I know that they're still photosynthesizing and helping the plant. So this kind of did it for me. I also talked to someone on Instagram that had the same experience, so I guess if you damage the leaves, they'll kind of send out new ones in its replacement as opposed to just holding on to the damaged leaves. Of course, um, this has only happened between me and another person, so I can't really guarantee it. I give this no extra lighting, no extra humidity. I really don't care for it in any special way whatsoever and it's doing really well for me. I'm really kind of enjoying the single leaf look. It's very, you know, it's minimalist. It's austere, it's, it's almost stoic. Okay, arrogance aside, how much does this go for? So I purchased it on a whim because I found it on Mercari for $40 free shipping. I probably wouldn't have paid more than $50 for it just because I didn't know if I was going to have the right conditions to grow it. And I figured, you know what, if it kind of declines, maybe I can trade it or something and get something else. Last time I checked um, when it was available, the same seller I purchased it from was selling it for like $80. So prices have really gone up. The only one I could find of this hybrid was actually $125 on Etsy. So do with that what you will. So our next one is Philodendron Melanocrasum. Sometimes when my hair is down, people have the inclination to reach for it. And I'm like, hi, can you get your grimy man knuckles out of my hair? Thanks. I'm hoping this Philodendron does not feel the same way because I really like to touch it. Touch. Don't touch. It just feels nice. Anyways, it does not look like much now. However, in the future, when it matures a little more, it'll have beautifully elongated, large, potentially, I think they grow up to like two or three foot 
leaves. I started this from a leaf with a node earlier this year. I have a video about my journey. Again, I'll link it below. Anyways, it's been very fast growing for me. Once it was established in its soil, it has given me about a leaf every 10 days, which I think is very fast growing for most aeroids. These also tend to have very large internodes, so they are very easy to chop up and propagate if you're feeling like you want to fillet your philodendron. I do not have this in a terrarium or anything. We have heating in our house. It's cold outside. It's not very humid and it is growing fine for me. Now, would it grow better in a terrarium or something? I don't know, probably, but it's growing just fine and dandy for me without it. I think this is also a less expensive, but you know, still highly priced substitute for Anthurium warapianum. So a small plant goes for around $400 and I got a node with a leaf on this for about $50. So it's a little bit more accessible to people that don't have $400 to spend on a single plant. And again, this can be propagated so you can trade it for other plants or you can sell pieces of it kind of reimburse yourself a little bit. Here it is. It may not look like much now, but I guarantee you in the future it's going to be gorgeous. This whole long stem has developed for me probably in the course of like a month. It used to be like a little tiny rosette looking like plant when I took it out of the sphagnum moss, but since then it has just grown rapidly. It's not fully unfurled, but here's the kind of bronzy leaf and it also has a little tiny leaf coming out right here so it's already working on the next leaf even though this leaf hasn't unfurled yet now i do give this a little bit of supplemental lighting it's not fully directly in my grow lights but it's kind of on the side so it is getting good light uh philodendrons do like to have light contrary to what people believe so if you give it a little bit more than bright and direct light they might do a little bit better for you and grow a little bit faster so just keep that in mind okay so here's the most recent listing i can find it's a small leaf for 55 dollars this is actually a pretty good deal because it's already rooted and there's a new leaf coming out as well mine was actually 48 dollars for what you saw posted on the screen i'm not really sure why the photographer decided to photograph it like this i'm not really sure what's going on you've got like the front the side the back I mean, I guess that's kind of descriptive, but maybe it's the white wall that kind of reminds me of a jail or something like that. It just needs little like dashes and stuff like that to tell you the height. So our next one is Philodendron Silver Sword. It's a little bit more uncommon of a rare philodendron. I don't see people talking about it a lot, but nonetheless, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think something that really sets this apart is that the leaves are fully and entirely silver. It's not speckled, it's not mottled, there's no pattern on it, it's just pure silver. And there really aren't any plants that are just fully silver for lesser of a price. I know there's Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghost, however, that's extremely expensive. It's over, I've seen it go for over a hundred dollars per node. I also think it looks like it's moldy. I don't know. It, it looks like someone like forgot it in a basement for like a bit and they're like, oh wait, um, this is what I left in a basement. In my quest for other fully silver leaved plants, I found Amy Dream Silver. This is, however, I feel like harder to find and more expensive. So again, I think this is the best fully silver plant for its price if you're looking for something like that. There is also a common plant called Peperomia Silver Ripple or like Silver Mist or I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is also pretty much pure silver. However, this, even though it's comparable in size right now, will get much, much larger than this. And uh, this isn't an aeroid, and uh, people like aeroids. So um, that's why I included this. Here it is. The camera doesn't really do it justice, but the leaves are almost glittery and kind of sparkly upon closer inspection. The new leaves have come out kind of contorted, and I think it's just growing too fast because I gave it too much light. So I'll have to dial that down a bit, but otherwise it's looking really nice. It's also sending me out another shoot down here, so... I'll be able to make two plants if I want to. Here is the silver ripple if you wanted to see it. This is absolutely gorgeous as well. I would definitely recommend this if you want a more common silvery plant that's not going to get very large. So on Mercari, these go for about $30 for a node with a good size leaf. 
I'm actually just looking at some of these gray ghost listings and there's one for 225 and it looks like it's literally in the worst condition. The leaves are like stunted. It looks horrend and kind of like wrinkled. Also in my Google deep dive, I found a Hoya Carnosa gray ghost that was sold for 2350 on December 3rd, 2016. So that's what this plant was worth for all of the craziness. Our next one is Hoya Matilda. Anyways, this is another hybrid Hoya. Um, that's kind of a trend here so far with the Hoya Sunrise. When you don't have a lot of genetic diversity within a species, you're basically inbreeding them when you're crossing the two and that leads to problems. And on the third day, God created the Remington Bull Action Rifle. So usually hybrids are more resilient to a wide range of conditions and they're also faster growing and more vigorous and healthy in general. So if you're new to plants, hybrids might be the right choice. Anyways, this is a cross between Hoya Serpens and Hoya Carnosa. I actually have Hoya Serpens in my last video, which is 10 rare plants not worth the hype. I mean, the leaves on this don't even have any pattern. They're just kind of like meh green and it's basically there because it's not very vigorous and it's quite slow growing and quite fragile with this i think you get the best of both worlds even though the leaves aren't as small and it's not quite as cute as hoya serpens serpens is very sensitive to high temperatures and it's also a very slow growing hoya and this does not have the same issues to the same extent as Serpens. Of course, Hoya Carnosa really tolerates a wide range of temperatures and conditions, which is why it's so popular and why it's so common and why it's so inexpensive. I will insert a picture here, but I got this at the beginning of June as a two leaf cutting. It is now November 1st and it's a pretty decent sized plant and it's actually giving me a penduncle, which I did not expect at the size. Here this is. I don't think this is a like splash cultivar, but I feel like all of them kind of have a splashiness on them. And I think this comes from the Carnosa. You probably can't see it, but here is that penduncle, this little like fuzzy knob right here, or that's what I think it is. There is however, a really splashy leaf right here that looks kind of cool. I kind of hope that this persists a little bit. This does look quite splashy though. So I found a node of this on Mercari for $24. And I also found a pretty large plant. I think it's like six or seven nodes and this is $58. So I think this would probably be worth about $58 as well. Again, this is just really taken off. I would highly recommend this Hoya if you can get your hands on it. So our next one is a more unusual Hoya that's kind of harder to find. This is Hoya Rotundiflora. I got this about three months ago. I will insert the picture of what it looked like. The feature that stands out about this is that the leaves are just so unique. They're actually almost rectangular, and I don't really know of any other plant that has rectangular leaves. This is just really, really, really odd, and I feel like the venation in the leaves doesn't really have any pattern or rhyme or reason. It just kind of goes wherever. The surface of the leaf is just very bumpy, and it reminds me of the texture of stained glass, and I just think that's very beautiful. Also, the leaves are fuzzy, but the hairs are so sparse, they're still shiny. As the leaves age, they also get extremely thick, kind of like Hoya carii. I just love leaves that have lots of substance that are kind of stiff. And this has really taken off for me. This plant is not flowered for me, but apparently the flowers are white and fragrant. Now, I got this for $32 plus shipping. However, I feel like it's gone up in price like all of the other plants and most recently one sold on mercari for a single leaf and a node for 27 dollars it it really looks quite pathetic i don't know if i would pay that much for a leaf and a node i got i don't know what did i get i got four leaves and like three nodes, which is a little bit more worth it for me. So that means it has since grown for me five new leaves, and I don't count these little tiny leaves right here, but more are on the way. So I would consider this pretty fast growing. Again, not as fast growing as things like Hoya Australis or Hoya Imperialis that just grow profusely fast or like Hoya Carnosa and stuff like that. But for what it is, I feel like it grows pretty fast. So the next few are fairly uncommon. I wouldn't say they're super rare, but nonetheless, they are not something that you're going to find for like five, ten dollars So I decided to include these. Our first one is Calathea mosaica, and I actually found this at a grow 
grocery store. It was a trending tropicals special and it was only $17. However, these definitely go for much more online, so that's why I included this. You're probably not going to run into this unless you're going from big box store to grocery store to big box store looking for things like this. I think this has really cool venation. It's known for its venation and that's what makes it stand out. When it's in full sun and you kind of look from the back, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's not as colorful as other Calatheas. It's more nuanced. From what I've heard, compared to other Calatheas, I haven't had any other Calatheas. I'm not huge on Stramanthi and Calatheas and whatever else. However, I've heard that this is one of the easier Calatheas to grow. I know a lot of people joke about them bringing home Calatheas and having them immediately start dying on them. I've had this for about two months and it is pushing out a lot of new growth. As you can see, it is right here and there's many more. I don't know how many, but there's also more shooting up from the soil that I can't see yet. It is really just doing well for me. I think I'm going to have to repot this fairly soon. I did just take out all of the soil and replace the soil from what it was growing in in the grocery store, just because it was in cocoa coir and it wasn't draining very well and it was causing mold to grow on the top. So these aren't too bad. I think I saw one for about three leaves that was $15. And then I also saw someone that resold this likely for $45. I'm sure a lot of people won't be finding these because other people will go into stores and buy all of them and resell them online for a markup. There was actually one other plant in the store when I was there and uh, I left it, of course, because it would be kind of rude for me to take the second plant. Obviously, I could have traded it for something, but again, I have a soul. A thing that a lot of people lack in this community, not everyone, but you, people, you'd be surprised at the things people do. I think part of the reason this sent out so much growth for me is because I have it in a western window and it's receiving some direct sunlight. A lot of these plants can tolerate direct sunlight, or not tolerate direct sunlight, but thrive in some direct sunlight indoors. If you have a plant that's low light, I don't think any plants are really low light. I think most can benefit from some portion of direct sunlight. But anyways, if your low light plants are not growing, maybe move them in an eastern or western window and give them some direct sunlight and you might get some results from that. I have never burned a plant indoors, so that's what that is. Our next one is philodendron micans. Now, again, this isn't rare by any means, but a large plant like this will probably set you back anywhere from like 40 to $80. I think what's great about this is it's a less expensive velvet leaf philodendron. It is probably the least expensive velvet leaf philodendron you will find. So you still get that characteristic you're looking for, but you don't have to sell any of your organs for it. Or other people's organs. I don't snitch. You know, do what you need to do. You do you. My mic is stuck in it. Funny thing is, this mic isn't even connected. Or at least it doesn't sound like it. So I just bought this philodendron for nothing. See, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Testing, testing, I'm an idiot. It also grows very quickly. I got it in a three inch pot and then I transplanted it into a five inch pot and it is now in a six or seven inch pot and this is all over the course of three months. Of course, this is getting some direct sunlight, which I think allows it to grow more profusely. In my plant tour, I had it in a southern window. It's still in a southern window. It's just sat back behind some Hoya hanging baskets, so it's a little bit more shaded, but still gets some direct sunlight nonetheless. So I found this on Mercari for $5 a node, uh, plus shipping. I think it turned out to be like $9 after all was said and done. I don't know who wants to bother with selling $5 items, but you know, <laughs> far be it for me to tell people not to sell things. I also found a small pot with, I think, four leaves that was going for $14. So, you know, you can get a little plant, it's not too expensive. And then I also went to logies.com. They're selling a four inch pot for $40. Usually the plants Lochi sells are pretty big and overflowing, so you'd get a good size plant. But again, five, ten dollars for a small propagule is very affordable for a velvet leaf philodendron or just velvet leaf aeroid in general.
Oh my god, Mike's not even connected. Look at this loser. <laughs> to entangle it. It's not even plugged in. It's just growing. Look at this. It's just... <laughs> it's funny. I'm gonna break this and then I'll cry. Okay, maybe not cry, but I don't really want to break it. Ooh, this one looks nice. Okay, so here we are for our last one, if you can see it from this distance. This is Variegated String of Hearts. Now, I ordered one earlier this year. It was $12 plus shipping. I got it, and then it started to dissolve. And I was like, well, I can't grow a string of hearts, I guess. Well, later on, I had a change of heart. And I wanted to go for it again because I think they're very pretty and cute and adorable. So I decided to go back on the selling platforms and I was like, oh, oh that yeah, prices have increased a little bit. Uh, you know, the size that I purchased went for 12 and it's now going for 30. So I was going through Reddit one day and I saw a post and it was on our plant watch. It's actually a sub I created and uh, it's meant to alert people when big box stores or online stores have uncommon or rare plants for good prices. So people like, you know, find stuff and then they'll post it. They'll post the location and the price and stuff like that so other people can go find it and purchase the plant. Anyways, very helpful because I got this string of hearts from Succulent Depot and it was a grand total of $9. Succulent Depot has since now not increased the price but decreased the size of the plant. Kind of like all the brands do with food at the grocery stores. Anyways, instead of a three or four inch plant for $9, you get a single pathetic node. Okay, I shouldn't be complaining, but like, ugh, like I would rather just pay more for a larger plant. They're selling a node in this size pot. It, it just, I don't know, it just looks kind of ridiculous. Anyways, if you want a $9 node of String of Hearts, uh, I guess go to Succulent Depot. I will link it below. Um, they restock pretty frequently. Happy I got this before that update. Anyways, the combination between pink and heart-shaped leaves, I think, is just really adorable, which is why I love this plant. There's not really any rhyme or reason, but I wanted to include it on here just because. Now, a lot of people are complaining about this and saying it's growing really slowly for them. I would say that this is not a slow grower for what it is, emphasis on what it is. The plant has variegation, which means there's less chlorophyll. And then the parts that do have chlorophyll have to support the parts that don't have chlorophyll. So of course this plant is not going to grow as fast. I kind of treat it like a succulent. You really want to let it dry out in between watering very thoroughly and give it direct sunlight, honestly. Again, it can tolerate less sunlight, emphasis on the word tolerate, but it won't grow as well or as fast. Upon closer inspection, I would say that this is basically a succulent. The leaves are very, very thick, much thicker than regular string of hearts. I'm not sure why this is, but they just are. So its capacity to hold water is much more, so you need to water it less. Now, I've never seen flowers on variegated string of hearts, but I think this is producing a flower for me, so we'll see if it develops. So here is my regular string of hearts, and the leaves are quite thin and it grows extremely fast because it has all of its chlorophyll. So generally variegated plants need more light because the parts of the leaf that do have chlorophyll need to be working harder to produce energy to support the parts that don't. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like this video. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or criticism or you know insults i welcome all comments and like the video if you like the video okay guys thank you so much have a wonderful day